Butler, let's see, because four, five, six red lights are on. The lights will be out any second to get things underway now. And it is a good getaway by Rob Butler for sure, although Dave Marshall tries to get up alongside him from that one-by-one -one staggered grid on the run down to Redgate. Rob Butler covers off the inside line. Charlie Oliver wide on the outside, but very wide goes Max Goff and loops himself around the outside line for second place. Worth contact to Rob Butler and Max Goff make contact. Off the road goes Butler and lots of other people have managed to bump into one another as well as they try to avoid all of that. But Rob Butler led in to Redgate, but it is Jack Keithley ahead as they plunge downhill and there's more mayhem Andy on the grass. Yeah, that's Keeble off. I think Jack Merrill's may have been involved and I fear Dave Newsham was off as well. It's not been a good day for Dave, has it? But what a start for Jack Keithley trying to hold on to the race lead from Dave Marshall, which he succeeds in doing so through Redgate Corner. Keithley then from, uh, what was that, third on the grid with a demon first few laps. There's a car off in the background. That was Senna Proctor, and I think that was Charlie Oliver, wasn't it? Yeah, yep, Oliver's it was. dropping down the timing tower as well. Some big names in trouble early on here, David, as we head for a safety car. We do indeed, yes. So uh, safety car deployed, and what that will do, of course, is bunch everybody up. No overtaking permitted. It gives them a little bit of time to get the tyre temperatures and pressures up behind the safety car as they flick out of the chicane. But Jack Keithley leads at the end of the opening lap. But yes, there was mayhem at Redgate, which therefore uh, really triggered it all the way down the hill. And as people tried to avoid contact, therefore made contact, uh, it was uh, still rumbling on all the way to the old hairpin with cars off the road. So uh, I think poor old Cat Indy may have been involved in it because she's dropped to the back of the pack. Stuart Lyons also has lost plenty of ground on that opening lap. Rob Butler did get going again by the look of it. So the uh, safety car deployed and as soon as possible, things will be back underway as the cars now then go out of the old hairpin looking back from the safety car. Well, Jack Keithley, what a turnaround, given that he was really struggling in qualifying, but it shows the importance, doesn't it, of that reverse grid. That is Cat Impey, who has uh, seemingly retired to the pit lane. So, poor old Cat, who uh, is a performance driving coach and instructor by trade, ex-Formula 3 Cup racer, not having a very happy time here. You said Dave Newsham wasn't having a, a good day. He's down in 21st, but it's even worse for Cat. Yeah, when it's not your day, it's really not your day, is it? But uh, starting in the midfield as they were, that was always, I suppose, on the cards. It looks like we're getting ready for a restart here. It will be a short uh, safety car, possibly. Jack Youthley certainly back in the field up out of the chicane, he hits the accelerator, and yeah, safety car in, so we're back to racing, David. We are indeed then, so the cars pour over the line. Is this where Jack Keithley is able to make a break over Dave Marshall, because he has got Mike Getz looking for a way past him. So the top three in the championship in a shuffled order, the top three in the race. In other words, these are the three heaviest cars. Fourth is Max Goff with only nine kilos. Then you've got Jordan Brennan, Next up in fifth, Callum Newsham is sixth, ahead of Maxis Bird and Edmondson, Senna Proctor, and then the race one with Isaac Smith is in tenth as they plunge downhill. Jack Easley trying to get away as Marshall and Epps argue over second place, but actually, Marshall's going with him. Yeah, Dave Marshall with good pace here, and he's in that slipstream. We were hearing them uh, saying after the first race, weren't we, that the slipstream effect in these cars is quite strong, but so is the dirty air. So when you're right behind a car, as Dave Marshall is now, uh, you're suffering from a reduction in downforce, a reduction in grip through the high-speed corners, and this is a high-speed circuit. So he wants to try and get past Keithley as soon as he can to get into that clean air, but to also make life easier on the tyres. On board with Jordan Brennan now down the exhibition straight. That's Callum Newsham behind, looking at trying to get up the inside of the chicane. But see how deep on the brakes Brennan went there. Closes right in on Max Goff in front as they come on to the start finish line again. They're all concertinaing back together again. Absolutely right. Keithley, Marshall, Epps, then Goff, then Brennan, dive down towards Redgate. Yes, the line is getting longer and a big, big effort there on the inside line. Max Ooh. Bird is a man on a mission. There's contact there, and I'm afraid that looks like possibly Newsham or Brennan that's been fired off wide. It's uh, Jordan Brennan, isn't it? He's back on the road, but tumbles down as a consequence of all of that. So, yet more for the race officials to have a look at at the foot of the hill. As there, the leader gets run out wide by Dave Marshall, and that brings Mike Epps up on the inside line. And Epps is about to go through into the race lead, down a fourth goes Jack Heathley. He got roughed up well and truly touring car style there. So it is now Mike Epps from Max Goff 
one and two as they come out of McLean's a real shuffle of the order. How does Mike Epps do it? He had nothing to do with that. They were side by side in front of him. He just laid back. It's almost like he can see into the future, can't he? He knows what's going to happen before it does happen. And through into the lead he went. But Max Scott, who is lighter than him and really fired up today, wants a good result. He's on the tail of the championship leader as they drop into the chicane. Epps then leads this Cardiff behind sideways for Edmondson into the back of Callum Newsham. Jack Keatley's off the road as well. Newsham clearly has been through the gravel too. And somehow Edmondson comes out of that in fourth. I wasn't seeing things there, was I? It was Edmondson that got sideways, I think, presumably from contact behind. And somehow the golf comes out of it, not only in one piece, but still in fourth place. And that has once again shook up the order. It has indeed, and through all of that, Mike Epps is still there. So it's the heaviest car championship leader coming into today. But he's got Max Goff behind him, then Dave Marshall, and then a bit of a gap back to Max Edmondson in that fourth place. Isaac Smith now, look at this. Race one winner started 12th, chipping his way up the order. He's fifth, and don't forget that it's the same weight through both races. So he is ballast free. Could he do a double here? Because the way that he's going, look, he's right there up with Edmondson, and they are catching the three leaders who are squabbling. Got to the inside of Epps. He's going to make a move for the race lead, and he should just about come out ahead. But right now, it could be a race win for Edmondson or Smith, given the pace they've got and the weight they're carrying relative to the others. Yeah, because the heavy cars are at the front, no one's getting away, are they? But no. that might now change, because Max Goff gets himself in front of Mike Epps, who tries to drive back through him, and indeed does succeed in nudging the other Peugeot wide. They're going to be three abreast across the start-finish line, because Edmondson is back in this again. On the inside is Goff, on the outside Edmondson, in the middle of Epps and Dave Marshall. How is this going to work out? Surely contact, yes there is. Edmondson gets elbowed out wide by Epps, who had already had contact with Max Goff, and it's Dave Marshall that comes through into second place. Oh, brilliant racing here, and this is all playing into the hands, as you said, of some of the drivers and the front runners in the earlier race. Isaac Smith up into third place uh. now, ahead of Mike Epps. Uh, Smith could well be on for another win here. As I say, he could do the double. Uh, when we get a chance to pause the breath, just remind me how Jack Keithley ended up in 21st. I know he got roughed up a little bit, but 21st, that was that was some roughing up. Uh, so there is Smith on the back of Marshall. So Max Goff leads the way, nine kilos. So he is carrying weight, but not that much. Part of this is going to depend, I think, on how long it takes Smith to get past Marshall, isn't it? Because if he's stuck there for a while behind that Lardia car, he's going to lose a lot of time to Max Goff, but if he can make a move pretty quickly here, either at the chicane or into Redgate, and get on with the job, he's got a chance of going after the leader, as Edmondson breaks way, way too late going into the chicane, and will lose a place to Jordan Brennan. Yep, Jordan goes fifth. Well, Jordan had just let Edmondson through, actually. Those two are teammates, remember, both racing for the uh, Riggs Esport racing team, and I think Edmondson had been given that place by Brennan, and then overshot the chicane, so uh, Brennan, uh, after his charitable deed, ends up getting that uh, sixth place back again, and immediately gets onto the tail of Callum Newsham. Uh, Jack Heathley, you were asking about, he was involved in the Edmondson-related drama at Chicane. I think he was the one that Edmondson got uh, sort of spun into the back of, so that's why uh, he lost time, clearly lost a lot more time than those that uh, were also involved in that incident. Dare I say it, Max Goff is getting away here, nearly seven tenths to the good now over Isaac Smith in second and Dave Marshall third. Peugeot one, two, three, four at the moment with Mike Epps fourth, Callum Newsham fifth and Jordan Brennan in sixth position. But Isaac Smith in second place, as we said, should have the pace here to go after Max Goff. This will be a fascinating second half of the race. Uh, you dare say Max Goff is getting away, but I would take issue with that. I reckon the gap's coming down a little bit because Isaac Smith is well fired up. It's here, Robbie Stapleford and Charlie Oliver fight for night. Stapleford just ahead, but Oliver's got the inside line down towards the chicane. And so Charlie Oliver recovering, goes back through on the inside line. He was another one in strife at the uh, first quarter of the race, having been third in race one. So, fastest lap of the race done by Isaac Smith. He's brought the gap down from seven tenths to four tenths. It is game on here for a double for Isaac Smith. Uh, in third place, Dave Marshall. Mike Epps runs fourth. Callum Newsham, our Holton family, on a fifth. And it's Brennan, Edmondson, Proctor, Oliver and Stapleford. Uh, out of all of this, who else do we see trying to make progress? Rob Butler is, from pole position, still mired in only 14th place after his dramas at the first corner. But, of course, there might be quite a bit to look at post-race from that and from the run through the Craner curves. Right now, though, Isaac Smith is going after Goff. The gap is coming down little by little, and with half the race still to go, plus a lap, he could very definitely be on for another win here. As I said, Isaac Smith is definitely not letting that stop get away. That That's what you said, I remember it well. Uh, and uh, the lead battle is well and truly on. Someone who is not on in 
I'm afraid, is Miles Lacey. That's between uh, McLean's and Coppers, I think, isn't it? And rejoins alongside Stuart Lyons. This should be good fun. Stuart Lyons at the back of the field. He's getting a bit of love on the uh, live chat, I've just noticed. Mm. So Stuart getting some TV time here uh, down in 21st place now. But that is at least one position higher than it was at the start of that. So that's progress. Uh, Max Goff still leading, but the gap is a fifth of a second. And in fact, it's almost overlapping as they head down the hill there because that effort was being made by Isaac Smith to try to find a way through. We're talking hundreds of a second now. Further back, Jordan Brennan is on the back of Max Edmondson as they plunge into the El Herpin. We've got, uh, what, 10 minutes and counting of the race to go, plus that regulation lap at the end. And Isaac Smith is now the race leader. So he's done it, he's gone through on the run up towards McLean's corner. Smith is through, uh, also up into second place now is Dave Marshall. So Max Goff's brief time in the race lead is over. He's down to third, although still with a little bit of real estate between himself and Mike Epps, who in turn has got the Edmondson and Brennan battle raging on behind him as they now come down towards the chicane. But this is Isaac Smith's chance now to Scarper, isn't it? He's ballast free and he's been chased by a car that's got 57 kilos of weight on board. This could be a relatively, relatively easy nine minutes for Isaac Smith if he can get his head down. Yeah, you rather sense that Isaac's biggest opposition would be Max Goff, because Goff is the other ballast-free car in this lead group. And so the fact that he's not only got past him, but got a heavier car between the two uh, of them now as well, that should rather uh, play into the hands of the race one winner. We haven't yet had uh, a two-time race winner in the first three races, so it could be that Isaac Smith, of all people, is the one to break that pattern. Teammates together here then, coming down into the old hairpin, Jordan Brennan, He's back behind Max Edmondson now, whether he let him through again or whether Max was able to force way through, I don't know. But either way, the two Riggs eSport racing team drivers are in uh, the same order, at least, that they were in the previous race, with Edmondson doing better than Brennan. And Edmondson now rather fancying his chances, I think, of taking the, what's that, fourth place away from Mike Epps. And that could be significant because if Edmondson has championship aspirations, beating Mike Epps is definitely something he'll have to do. Absolutely right. They drop down towards the chicane then here, so uh, Edmondson all over the back of Epps, but Mike goes defensive, hangs onto the place as they flick their way now through the chicane. Epps goes wide, and the lighter car of Max Edmondson should get the drive out of the corner. Yes, he does. He's on the outside line. Edmondson knows he's in front and has got the job done well before the breaking zone for Redgate Corner, so uh, good effort that. Now, Charlie Oliver, who had a fastest lap at Brands Hatch, done it again here. Remember, that's another driver recovering. Charlie Oliver up into ninth spot, but Max Edmondson now, if he can keep it behind him, and he should, with a lighter car, be able to get away. He, in turn, could also be on for another podium here, but look at Smith. He's over a second clear up front now. Uh, yeah, he is uh, marching away now, isn't he? Whereas Dave Marshall can't really shake off Max Goff, so it's the type of second that looks the most likely to change. And then also this one for four between uh, Edmondson, Epps and Brennan. Further back, Martin Richards is getting involved with Kenny Press here. We haven't seen much of Kenny uh, over tonight's races, but he is currently holding 16th place. Or is he? Because the Peugeot drags alongside, coming out of the old head, the superior run there out of the turn for Martin Richards. He now takes that 16th place away. Miles Lacey is not far behind them. Uh, Miles has just overtaken both Stuart Lyons and Jack Merrill's on the previous lap. Who I think have been off the road, perhaps. So Lacey starting to regroup again after that grassy moment a lap or two ago. So the cars then coming out of the right hander of Coppice down towards the chicane. Good battles raging on towards the rear of the pack as Mike Epps has to think about going defensive there into Redgate, but. Uh, coming under a renewed attack, isn't he, now, from Jordan Brennan as they drop downhill once again. So, uh, a good effort this by Jordan Brennan, but you see Mike Epps, by going defensive, Andy, losing touch with those ahead now. Uh, yeah, well, Edmondson's already got past Epps somewhere then, hasn't he? Because remember, I said the two teammates were together a moment ago. They're now split by the Peugeot. So Epps, again, probably that weight is starting to affect the tyre weight. You really lean on that left front tyre a lot here at Donington. If you're carrying 75 kilos, you're going to lean on it harder than those that are carrying less. And you can see they just can't carry the mid-corner speed that Jordan Brennan can. Brennan on the outside line still has a chance of getting the place, no, not into Coppice. And now he has to watch out because the always exciting Callum Newsham is right behind them. And so too Charlie Oliver. What a recovery drive this is from Charlie. I didn't take note of where he dropped to after that first corner off must have been outside of the points and here he is eighth place with possibly still a shot at the top five 
Yeah, don't rule him out yet. We've just under six minutes of the race still to go. So uh, Isaac Smith then comes across the timing line, still clear in the race lead. 12 laps are in the book, and he's 1.2 seconds to the good over Dave Marshall, as there is an effort being made on the inside line. Uh, Usham versus Brennan. Jordan stays ahead. Now, these two, of course, had some good fights at Brands Hatch, but as they are squabbling, so Charlie Oliver is inching up onto the back of them. Down the hill, they plunge once again. Got to take your hat off, though, to Isaac Smith, hasn't you? Because this has been a really impressive drive from 12th on the grid. I know he's got no weight, and those around him have, but even so, he has done everything absolutely right with five minutes to go. Now, what about Oliver? There's the chance for at least, at least three more paces to be gained here if he can keep out of trouble. Yeah, well, yes, which he hasn't been able to do so far in this race, but despite that early off, he seems to have uh, made pretty easy work of working his way back into the points, now into the top 10 as well. And here he is, tries to get the overlap on Callum Newsham, a better exit out of Coppice for the Audi, which is on the inside of the Hyundai now, going down into the final chicane. Four different brands of car, five if you factor in Senna Procter, who's also catching this group fairly rapidly. Brilliant racing here, brilliant variety, and a brilliant overtake there from Charlie Oliver. That better exit from Coppice uh, meant he got the inside line for the chicane and gets ahead of Callum Newsham, who's thinking about fighting back into Redgate. Charlie knows that, defends the inside line, and this just takes some of the pressure now off of Jordan Brennan in front, who perhaps, along with Mike Epps, will try and focus on getting away from these two. And Isaac Smith still clear in the race lead. 1.3 seconds to the good over Dave Marshall. Charlie Oliver then now up into seventh place. Uh, trying to hustle on and see what else could be done about gaining ground. Uh, further back in the pack, Jack Heathley 15th, so his yo-yo day, he's climbing up again, and of course that has just put him into the points, hasn't it? A solitary point for 15th place, but it could be crucial come the end of the Browns Hatch weekend at the end of March, as down through the old hairpin there goes Triple uh, Eight, Kenny Press, great enthusiast for all of this, he loves his sim racing, and he in turn is having a good battle with James Merrill's there in the MSL car, nose to tail they run up towards McLean's, that's only in quotes for 18th place but it's as fierce a fight as any as X then comes through the chicane looking strong now oh yeah but he's uh, slow off the exit of the corner again isn't he so Jordan Brennan once more using the lighter car to come off the corner quicker and just drives past Mike Epps but Mike is only ever losing one position at a time he knows when to pick his battles doesn't he rather than really fighting tooth and nail there with Brennan which could have let uh, Oliver and Newsham have a go at him too he just let uh, Brennan go slotted back into the racing line and as a result, for the time being, at least, keeps the Audi behind. On board with Epps, looking back through the rear window, and the menacing Audi of Charlie Oliver as he carries much more speed through the old hairpin, gets in the slipstream. Now, which way is he going to go? The left-hand side is open, but that's the outside line for McLean's. He doesn't want that. He wants the inside. He can't get there. Epps is late enough on the brake to put a tap in the tail from the Audi, and that backs Charlie Oliver up into Callum Newsham, who carries all the speed in the world off the turn. But again, he's only shown the outside line. That becomes the inside, maybe on the exit of Coppice. But Oliver again hangs on. Contact with my there. This is getting physical. It is indeed, and Callum Newsham is about to buy into this because he's on the outside line of Oliver down towards the chicane. Gains a place, two wheels on the dirt, loses traction, loses control, loses the line, loses a place because Oliver will pounce coming up with the momentum. And Charlie Oliver, one down and one up, goes through. But Senna Proctor is also going to take advantage. So Callum Newsham gained the place, loses two. And out of all of that squabbling, look at the gap that Epps has suddenly bought himself because having been under massive pressure at Coppice, he's away and gone. No matter how much trouble Mike Epps seems to be in, he always seems to come out of it smelling of roses, doesn't he? He's got mm. clear air all around him now, and only two minutes plus one lap to go. I do think that Oliver, Proctor and Newsham have the pace to catch him again, though, so that might not be the last bit of uh, defensive driving that Epps has to do. Oliver is already starting to breach the gap, isn't he? But uh, so far, everything they've thrown at him, he's had more than an answer for. Reminder, at the front of the field, still Isaac Smith leading from Dave Marshall second, Max Goffin third, dropping back a bit now. And Max Edmondson isn't really reeling those two in. He's inching towards Max Goff, but by half a tenth or a tenth a lap, and he's still 1.2 seconds back. So the likelihood of there being many changes within the top four or five perhaps is rather slim. Further back, it is anyone's guess. Oliver already looked back on the tail of Epps. Yes, how things change in a lap, don't they? So, for the top six, Charlie Oliver, can he gain more ground? I said he had the chance of gaining three places. Well, that's two of them done. Uh, the other one is going to be X, if he can do it. There's a minute plus a lap still to go in this race. And Isaac Smith leads the way. Interesting, as you see there, look, just diving down towards Redgate on the inside line. Senna Proct trying to get past Calabusham. He will do it at Hollywood. 
just, I think, on the inside line. The road should come to centre. Yeah, he's gone through just to finish the point about Isaac Smith. He's worked his way into the lead, but he's never gone storming off into the distance, has he? A second and a half is the margin, almost as though he's driving within himself here, Andy, keeping out of trouble and just making sure he maintains an advantage. Yeah, Isaac Smith driving within himself. Callum News from driving into Santa Proctor's yeah. house there, and that didn't really help his exit be from the corner. Oliver around the outside of Epps, and there's a hip and shoulder, and Oliver's in the gravel. And that is another rather more robust defensive move from Mike Epps, but a successful one nonetheless. Uh, just your point about Isaac Smith, this is exactly what he did in the first race. Uh, we'll get to that in a second because there's more contact. Uh, the back of that Peugeot is going to have going to resemble the front end of an Audi more than the rear end of a Persia by the end of the race. The amount of times Charlie Oliver's hit it, goes to the outside through the chicane, still can't get by. And I think maybe a bit of frustration starting to creep in here from Charlie Oliver, who knows that he had the pace for another podium in this race and can see that that isn't going to happen. Right, I will now finish my point about Isaac Smith. He told oh, yes. us, didn't he, after race one, uh, that he really was thinking about managing the tyres in the first race, didn't go any harder than he had to, sat behind uh, Max Edmondson for a time to save the tyres. And I think that's what he's doing now. He knows he's got a second and a bit in hand. He doesn't need to go any harder. You don't win, you don't score more points for winning the race by five seconds than you do for winning it by one second. So just stroking it home, looking after the tyres, I think. I think you might be right, and it is working well for him. It's going to bring him into the mix for the championship, isn't it? Although Dave Marshall here looking good for second, Max Goff third, Oliver possibly for sixth before the very end. He has not given up, and there's a bit of a brush with Epps there as they came out of McLean's corner heading into Coppice this time, but He's going to go through on the inside, job done. Charlie Oliver goes through them, but Isaac Smith up front still looking strong as far as the race win is concerned. Marshall and Goff for the podium, but Charlie Oliver has done it then up into top six. Uh, he's raced well today, hasn't he, Charlie Oliver, in that yellow Audi? Yeah, this has been uh, one of my picks for drive of the day. I'd have to say, although Mike Epps isn't done with him yet, he carried a lot more speed off the chicane. For some reason, that's been where he's been weak, really, up until this point. Tries to get up the inside. He's on the grass going into red gate. Mike Epps is getting his elbows out here a bit more than I expected him to, honestly. He's got this championship lead to try and defend, yes, but he also knows that he's at a natural pace disadvantage because of that success balance. So, uh, a bit surprised at how uh, feisty he was getting from Charlie Oliver. Didn't manage to get through though. Oliver now should be good in sixth. And what that's done, look, is it's brought Senna Proctor and Callum Newsham onto the tail of Mike Epps. Three either current or former BTCC drivers, depending on what Senna Proctor's plans are for this year, all together with less than a lap to go. Absolutely right. But up front, Isaac Smith is going to do the double. And he was perhaps uh, very much an outsider at the start of the day. But with great pace, uh, he's got on with the job outside of the front row for the first race and up from 12 on the grid for race two. Isaac Smith then comes through the clock at zero. He will make his way up towards the timing line. And Isaac Smith takes two from two at Donington then in the MSL Fast R Touring Car E Series with Power Max Racing powered by VRRC. It is a win for Isaac Smith ahead of Dave Marshall second, Max Goff the third, Max Edmondson fourth, Jordan Brennan fifth, then Charlie... <laughs>